mystery of what really happened to John and Joyce Sheridan is deepening by the day, even though it's almost two years since the night of blood and fury in September 2014 that left the couple dead in their Montgomery home. We told you yesterday that a newly released affidavit by noted forensic pathologist Dr. Michael Bodden says the Sheridans could have been murdered in their bedroom by an unknown intruder who escaped into the night shedding more doubt on a controversial prosecutor's office finding that labeled the case a murder-suicide in March of 2015. Now, I've scoured Montgomery Township where the couple made their home for clues, but tonight we're going to take you to a place 200 miles away where the pain of losing the Sheridans is still pronounced, the questions about their deaths still linger, and yes, people there too wonder, what killed the Sheridans? The whole community was shocked. We couldn't believe it would happen to our neighbors. People that we knew. The Sheridans kept a summer home in the village of Morris, New York, an almost idyllic small town in the Butternut Valley in the central area of the state. Quite a sylvan, quiet place. Earlier this month, I went there to find the answer to a simple question. Did the Sheridans, who were the picture of marital harmony back in New Jersey, act differently while tucked away in the hills and pastures of Otsego County, New York? They seem to be very sharing in, in their telling of stories and in their interests. They seem very equal in all their discussions of these things, don't you think? I do. I do think so. That's Peter and Audrey Gregory, who bought and sold antiques with and from the Sheridans. Audrey's family has lived in Morris for generations, and she explained to me that people still take a dim view of outsiders. You say he's from Lawrence, he's from Oneonta, he's from South New Berlin. If you go beyond that, he's from off. Like you're from way off. Way off. <laughs> but somehow the Sheridans fit in and were beloved. Morris is a picture-perfect small town. It's almost like stepping into a time warp. The bank closes at four, your cell phone hardly works, the picnic tables are set up at the church for the Strawberry Festival, and there's only one intersection in town with a full-time stoplight. See? I wondered, was something more sinister lurking below the surface of this idyllic spot? I had to ask the locals. I asked Nicole Panic, the diner's owner, what she thought. Have you seen a fight? Nope. Quarrel? Nope. Never. Hi, John. Panic had rented from the Sheridans, lived on their property, and saw them the weekend before they died. They were saying their goodbyes for the season, for a return that was never going to come. But just as Morris itself was almost too good to be true, I had to ask, could the Sheridans have been faking it? I can't tell you how much I thought of them. That's Charlotte Blevins, who was probably the best friend to the couple of all the people that I was able to talk to up there. She, her late husband John, and John and Joyce Sheridan spent meals and auctions together. They were kind and gentle people. They would have John and I come over and we would uh, have dinner with them at their house, Joyce would cook. Charlotte showed me a scarf that Joyce Sheridan had knitted for her, and touching the fabric of this homemade gift that a lost friend had given her almost moved her to tears. Looks very nice. <laughs> she did a nice job of it. She did. She still feels the pain of this loss. And the people here, who you might say knew the Sheridans better than their Montgomery neighbors, who really only saw them coming and going from that house, are even more emphatic when you ask them their opinion of the prosecutor's office findings. I still, to this day, I have a hard time believing that. I didn't believe it when someone took me. I think it's far-fetched. And I think that maybe Charlotte Blevins, who knew them well, said it best. John was a kind, loving man, and I never saw him get really upset about anything, ever. I don't think he would have hurt Joyce, ever, no matter what. 